Welcome to Fight Zone. The blood, the sweat, the tears, the sweet taste of victory. Join the revolution. Why do you keep fucking telling me to stop? This is Jermaine reporting for the Power Pound Boxing Show. I'm joined alongside the man, Matt Windle. How you doing? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. No problem. Matt, it's a fight week. A few days out, you'll be taking on uh, Tommy Frank for the British flyweight title on Saturday night. How are you feeling and how has training been? I'm excited, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited. This is it's what you get into boxing for, you know, British titles. I know I know people talk about world titles, but that always seemed a bit a bit grandiose, a bit big for me. Um British title was was something that I used to always watch. I've I've said it a few times now, but on on Friday nights, Friday fight night, there's always British title fights on when I was a, a kid growing up in early two thousands. Um so yeah, the, the British title was was kind of the pinnacle and everything for me really. So um just just being able to to fight for it is something beyond my wildest dreams. So I'm I'm very proud and obviously I'm I'm gonna do all I can to to give the best show in myself. Yeah. Obviously, like you just mentioned, uh, the British title is a prestige title. I interviewed Tommy Frank, your opponent, last week, and he said it's obviously it's what uh, fighters have always dreamed of fighting for. Obviously, if it's not apart from a world title, that's what you, that's what you want to, as that's what you want to win as a British fighter, in, in especially. One hundred percent, and and I think you know, in 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 some ways, I know there'd be a lot of people that would disagree with this, but. I think it is the most prestigious title in boxing because, of course, everybody wants to to win a world title. That's their their secret ambition, even if they feel that 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 would never be a possibility. But I've said this in in previous interviews as well: is what world title? You know, WBC, WBO, IBO, IBF, WBA, Ring Magazine, Silvers. Platinums, diamonds, supers. What world title are we talking about when we're talking about the most prestigious belt? Yes. So when when you're the when you're the British champion, that's it. It's not there's no super this or silver that or three different letters British champ. You know IBF British champion, WBA British champion. You know you just the British Boxing Board of Control British champion. The oldest belt in boxing and and the most beautiful belt in boxing and everybody knows if you're the british champion you're a serious fighter you know so for me it, it, it yeah the world title it would be a bigger platform but for me it's it's the belt in boxing yeah 100 percent. not many people get, uh, go on to win a british title uh so yes yeah, like i said it's a prestige but and obviously for british fighters that's 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 what they want to win obviously yeah. that first thing and then obviously going on to one day fight for world honors absolutely yeah like i say the, the you know the world honors is is everybody's childhood ambition just because of, of what it is it's it's the world you know but uh, i feel as though the the british title always seems like everybody's achievable childhood ambition in an extent even though i never thought I'd ever be boxing for a British title. It kind of seems like the the achievable one, whereas the the world title seems quite, you know, quite a way away. But um, yeah, for for me, I, I just think the British title is is so beautiful. And like I say, I've watched so many British title fights as a as a kid growing up. I never could have imagined that that I'd be fighting for a British title. And even in recent times, I never imagined I'd be fighting for a British title because, of course. My weight division, which is the light flyweight division, isn't recognised by the British Boxing Board of Control. So there, there isn't a, a British title in that weight division. So I'm having to to move up in weight to and accept a, a fight with a dangerous opponent like Tommy, just just to have that chance to fight for the British title. You know that's how much it means to me that I'm I'm giving away every every single advantage you could ever possibly want I, it's it's all in in tommy's favor um but i'm i'm doing that just just so i can fight for the british title that's how much it means to me yeah obviously you, you mentioned tommy 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 frank he's got your opponent 
he'd be fighting for the British title against. Uh, I want to ask you, obviously, what dangers does Tommy bring and uh, and what weaknesses does he bring too that you think you can exploit? Um, he brings he brings a, a wealth of, of danger. He's, he's more experienced than me. He's had more championship fights than me, done more championship reigns than me, bigger than me, stronger than me. Fighting in his backyard in Sheffield, he's his promoter, he's, he's the promoter of the show. Um, longer, better, you know, better reach, smoother, silkier boxer, better looking. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, you know. I think, uh, I, I, I think. I think anywhere down down the list, you know, you look at his, his stoppage record within title fights as well. He's he's stopped some good kids, um. So, I think you, you go down the the list of of how a fighter could potentially be dangerous. I feel as though that that is something that that Tommy brings to the table in in every aspect in every department. Weaknesses, um. Honestly, I, I'm not even trying to, to, to say if I, I really don't know because anything that you would potentially say, like maybe work rate or something like that, I'm convinced that, that there's going to be a new Tommy Frank for this fight. I don't think he's going to get on the back foot and move around the ring and, and be sl- slick and silky for, for 12 whole rounds. I'm... I don't know why that I don't. There's certainly no inside knowledge, but I've just got and I've not even been listening to the interviews that that he's been doing. Um, but I've just got a feeling that because he's bigger than me and and all physically and all the rest of it, I, I just feel like he's going to have a point to prove after it. Certainly after his last fight, um, I think when people keep saying he's coming off the back of two defeats, yeah, I know if you if you check box wreck and whatever he is but when you get injured in in one of those fights and and have to retire because you you physically can't even lift your arm to to defend yourself I, I think it's a bit harsh to kind of class that as an as an actual defeat you know what I mean he's, he's had one proper defeat in his career and that was his last fight but he's, he's still going to to feel like he's he has a point to prove so I, I think he's going to come at me and and try and throw lots of punches and um yeah kind of make a a bigger name for himself at my expense that's what what i think is going to happen but i I don't know i want to ask you how much would it mean for you to rip up the script and uh cause a shock and win on 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 saturday night yeah well you know as as you know i'm a i'm a poet not an actor so Reading scripts isn't isn't my forte. It's not my MO. It's not something that I'm, I'm used to doing. So, if anybody thinks when when I talk nicely of Tommy and talk about his strengths and his attributes and and how up against it I am, if anybody thinks that I'm just turning up as an opponent so that I could one day at a dinner show say, "Oh, I fought for the British title," that's that's not what it is. You know, I'm I'm certainly going to to win. And I'll I'll give it everything I've got. Will that be good enough? Time will tell. Who knows? But um, people wasn't expecting me to to win my last fight. There's many fights I've had as a pro that that people haven't expected me to win. Um, I've had lots of tough fights in a very short kind of ten fight career so far. I'm going into my second twelve rounder. I've done two ten rounders, an eight rounder. So I'm I'm fairly experienced for somebody that's that's going into only their their 11th fight um but yeah i mean it, it, it it's cliche to say it's, it's everything but for me that that would it, it would be why i took up boxing you know any any time that i've had a dodgy decision and, and a bit of a robbery or amateurs or pros or you know anything because i i, I do feel like i've I've certainly not always been the luckiest fighter over the years, both amateur and pros, with regards to to getting tight decisions. So to to then win the British title, that would kind of make it all make sense. And it'd be like everything that I've had to endure, everything that I've gone through and throughout my, my 15, 16 years of boxing has led me to to this moment. And, and it's for 
this moment and I know Tommy wants to make history with regards to being the first flyweight from Sheffield to win the title but equally I will be the first flyweight from Birmingham to win this title since 1930. Wow. So when you think of Birmingham as the second city and, and we've produced you know great guys like like the Afis and stuff as well you know um it's also I've, I've, I've got my own little piece of of history that, that I want to make as well so um yeah I, I respect Tommy immensely um, but um yeah I'm not just I'm not just turning up to to be an opponent that's for sure yeah, yeah. brilliant I lo- love to hear that I love to hear that uh, as you mentioned just a minute ago, I was going to ask you anyway, uh, you're a poet and actor, but I want to ask you, how did you first get into poetry? And uh, if you win your fight against Tommy Frank, have you got a poem uh, ready made? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll quickly answer your second question first. I certainly haven't got anything made because I don't, I don't want to tempt fate and, and curse it. I don't want to put all that time and effort into a poem if it's not needed. <laughs> so uh, I think what I'll do is I was doing some recording for Fight Zone the other day. And they gave me a few key words and they said, do you think you could do a quick freestyle using some of these words? Just talk about you, Tommy Frank, the fact you've got an exciting style. It's happening on Fight Zone. Do you think you could do a, a quick freestyle for it? They said, you could take as many, you know, have as many takes as you need. And um, I said, yeah, yeah, sure. We, you know, we'll, we'll give it a go. So I just quickly thought of a few things and then boom, in one take, I just did this little freestyle Um about the fight which they're going to show on Saturday before oh, the fight okay. advertising it. So, um, so uh, you know, I think heat in the moment, adrenaline running, and all the rest of it. I think I'll I'll be able to to quickly put together you know four six lines of of poetry to to celebrate at the at the end of the fight. So I, I'm sure I managed to to scrape my way through that. And then um, with regards to getting into to poetry. Um, it, it was a, a little fortuitous break, really, a, a, a bit of luck, a bit of encouragement, a bit of laziness. So we, I was I was attending a, a pupil referral unit, a pre school for the final couple of years of my education. Um, I, I didn't get on the greatest at school. I was always academically top sets and stuff, but I, I think I was just bored. To be honest, I, 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 looking back, I think I was just bored and. Um, I just didn't get on very well with with school and um, sort of you know against the authority and stuff a bit but um so I ended up at proof schools and, and my teacher was doing coursework and the teacher said for coursework you could either write a, a poem or a a story and I was like I'm, I'm not really bothered miss and she said well the story's got to be two pages and the poem's got to be one page and I was like I'll do a poem miss <laughs> I was just being lazy I just wanted to do do half the work I liked writing raps and you know lyrics MCs and stuff so I thought if I'm gonna write a poem I'll make it rhyme I could rhyme fairly easy so I, I wrote this poem in in the lesson she read it and was was impressed with it and then she encouraged me to enter into the Young Poet Laureate application uh, form then she put that in front of me and encouraged me to enter into the competition and at the time Birmingham was the only city in the country that had a Young Poet Laureate competition so if I was anywhere else in the country I, I probably wouldn't have got got into poetry there are lots now lots that I've been involved with and, and lots that I've not been involved with as well that happen all over the country so that's great for young people to to aspire towards but um so I, I entered into the competition wrote all the poems and stuff that I needed to write and then I found that I made the final 10 which is when I experienced poetry for the first time and I uh, saw people like freestyling and beatboxing and you know dual heritage people with gold teeth and I was like, these are like the geezers that I knock about with on the street not like people that you expect to write poetry you know and that uh, everybody else that made the final was was very kind of middle class grammar school and and the majority of girls I think there was there was seven or eight girls to two or three lads um but the the guys that were running it they were a bit more like me they sort of took a liking to me I ended up coming runner up that year um, but they kind of took me under their wings and in time there, there was a performance and they invited me along and I, I wrote new stuff I was really inspired practice and then the next year I came I entered again made the final again this year I memorized my poem instead of getting up with a shaky bit of paper and I, I took the microphone and I you know I walked up and down the stage and I, I tried to, to own it a little bit more and and thankfully 
Um, I won that year, becoming the first male ever in the country to become a young poet laureate. And then from there, then that put me in front of schools and young people and, and teachers. And teachers would then come up to me and say, our kids really like that and they normally hate poetry. Do you come into schools? So then you exchange details, they invite you into the school, you do a good job at the school, they then pass your details on to their local school or a colleague that they know at another school, snowballs word of mouth, you know, and, and next thing I knew I was I was on a plane to Indonesia to teach a bunch of uh, students uh, English second language and I was I was only 19 at the time traveling the other side of the country 16 hour flights on my own uh, to to teach other young people how to how to write poetry it's quite bizarre because I I started going into schools when I was 17 so of course when I was teaching like year 9 year 10 year 11 they were my kind of age you know it was like so how old are you? Like 17. <laughs> and they were like, how come you're teaching the class at 17? And I'm 16, do you know what I mean? I'm like, because I, I got out of school and I worked hard once once I was out of school. So um so yeah, that's kind of how it how it all came about. Like saying a little bit of luck, hard work on my part and and support if, and encouragement from uh, from my teacher. Yeah. That's an incredible story, that really is. Yeah, uh, yeah I really <laughs> yeah, enjoyed that. That's a really good story. I, I was, <laughs> I'm it glad was, you explained yeah, that. It was, it was strange to see because I think the way I was at school, people would never have, have imagined me being a you know a poet or getting into education and, and going back into schools then for an occupation. But as I just said about, I was a bit bored at school and stuff. I, I was always creative. You know, I was always creative. Always for I, I look back. I found a poem that I wrote um, when I was in year seven. I was going for an old school bag, and there's a, a poem in there that I wrote from. Uh, about water from year seven and so I, like I say whether it was raps or actual poetry or uh, I wrote a poem then when, when my nan died when I was kind of year, year nine year ten um so I, I I didn't grow up as such sort of you know loving poetry enjoying poetry knowing anything about poetry but I always seem to have this this affiliation and uh, you know gravi gravity would just sort of pull me pull me towards it so as, as I look back through my life now even I remember in year three we was writing limericks you know there was an old man from York and all that sort of stuff and uh, I was the first one to finish in the class and the teacher would say uh, okay go go and write another one and I'd finished two before the majority of the class had finished their first one and the teacher would be like okay well go and help the rest of the class so as an eight-year-old or whatever I was I was walking around the class helping young people oh. to write poetry and then you fast forward 10, 20, you know, 22 years later, that's what I'm what I'm doing for a living and, and what I have been doing for a living since since I was 17. So it's it's just really bizarre looking back then how you was already kind of laying the groundwork without without even knowing about it. So that's why when I work with young people now, anything at all that they're good at or show an interest in. I try and think of a way that they could potentially link that into a career. So I was working with the young people um, pre-lockdown with a young person, and um, he had this thing. He, he was in one of the, you know, one of the smaller groups and classrooms and stuff. Needed some some additional support, and then um, he couldn't stop like drawing on on himself. He was he was always drawing on himself, and I, and I think he he kind of got into a bit of trouble at school for doing so as well and um when i was talking about their interests and stuff and you have to try and scratch beneath the surface a little bit more to get past the whole video games and xbox and okay. youtube sort of stuff after that they can go a bit quiet but i just try and keep digging a little bit more and uh because i noticed these these drawings and stuff on his hand that he normally gets in trouble for i was like oh i said well never know you might be a, a tattoo artist or something one day you know you might you might get celebrities and famous people coming into here and uh, you know getting you to to do the tattoos so it's like you're just practicing now or the tattoos that you're going to do on other people one day and it was sort of like ah oh, yeah 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 that's it do you know what I mean and that sort of stuff so there's another couple of lads that I work with and um they were they were doing like a fancy dress thing for the school but again they were sort of yeah you know your lad lads and the teacher didn't expect them to get into the whole costume designing half as much as they did and they and they really got got into it and the teacher was talking about how surprised they was and the simple thing is they may go on now and become costume designers for 
for stage or theatre or, or, or cinema. You know, I mean, I, I worked with a guy at an event a few years ago who designed the um, the actual Batman cape for the Dark Knight films. And, uh-huh. and he, so anything that we see, anything that's being worn, like anything at all, somebody has to design it, don't they? So I was like, you know, these lads, they could go on and, and be costume designers for, for Hollywood. And the teacher was like, I never thought about that. So it's like anything that you see that someone's good at, you just try and, and find a, a route that they could potentially go on to to do something and make a career out of that thing that, that they enjoyed because there are there are so many careers out there for, for young people to to take up. Yeah. That's a brilliant story, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> How much would it mean for you to win and inspire the next generation? Obviously people who've been following you, your poetry and your boxing career. Yeah that, that's one that that's other than than doing it for myself because I don't think we hear that enough from people and certainly boxers, you know, they always say, it's for my family, I'm doing it for my family, it's for my kids, I'm doing this for my kids. And they're not, oh, really, are they? Do you know what I mean? They're doing it for themselves. There are easier ways to make a, a little bit of dough. Um, yeah, they want to make the kids proud and all the rest of it, but they, oh, really, they're not They're not doing it for their family. They're, not do, they're doing it for themselves. Boxing is a very selfish sport. You have to be selfish to do it. It's a, it's a, it's a single, you know, one man sports um so ultimately we we do it for ourselves but then scratching a little bit deeper and going a little bit further than the kind of the the self the the reasons the selfish the reasons that we do it for I'm trying to inspire other young people not even just to get into boxing just to to achieve in whatever it is that that they want to do because the the other great thing about being a flyweight is it it breaks so many stereotypes so i'm going into schools and the teachers are telling them we've got a boxer coming in you know they expect someone the size of aj to just come walking through the wall do you know what i mean just barge through the wall and then they see little little skinny me come through um and maybe i'm kind of a stone above fight weight or something, you know, in between fights, and they'll be like, "Ah, oh, so you gotta put some, you gotta put some weight on to fight." And I'm like, "Well, wait on, I'm like, no, I've got a stone to lose weight. <laughs> I mean, I've got, however skinny you think I am now, I've got to get a whole lot skinnier before I get into the ring and have a fight." And they're like, "Ah," oh, and, and it really shocks them. So, um, it, it kind of breaks stereotypes that no matter how big or small or you know gender or sexuality or whatever it might be uh, whatever you think there's there's no need for anything to to hold you back and I always say to them especially when I do my, my morning assemblies for the first the first lesson I say of course I want you to to enjoy the poetry workshops that we do and if, if I'm there to do any boxer size as well I want you to take the the discipline away from the boxer size but ultimately I'm not there to try and convince 250 teenagers to become poets and or boxers um, I'm there to try and encourage them to pursue their passions you know boxing and poetry aren't the best things in the world what they are are the best things in the world for me you know and they will have their outlets their hobbies interests passions that are the best things in the world for them and some of them will be popular passions that, that their friends love and like boxing for instance and some of them won't be this popular like being a teenage boy that writes poetry you know so um what it is whatever it is whether it's the popular one or not just just be true to yourself because your friends will support you in in whatever it is that you want to do and if you don't feel that you're getting adequate support then and they're probably not your friends and you know whilst I don't want to make anyone fall out with with anybody else it's I think it's better that you you find out sooner rather than later who your friends are people often ask me oh well, what did your friends think when you was growing up and you was writing poetry I was like they, they ask it almost like I expect them to say they used to take the mick out of me and give me a wet willy and a wedgie for writing poetry or something do you know what I mean and and that just wasn't the case. They'd be like, if they came into my house and I was on the computer or something, they'd be like, oh, what are you doing? I'd be like, oh, I'm writing a poem. I'd be like, oh, right. Like, a rap, you're writing a rap. And I'd be like, well, kind of, I guess, sort of, but not really. It's a poem. So, 
no music and you know the rhythm changes a little bit but um yeah lyrics and that so yeah poem they'd be like oh right, okay cool do you want to play fifa and then you just carry on but i think if i if i try to hide it and mask it and try calling it a rap instead of a poem and all the rest of it then i think there would have been a, a greater incentive to try and take the mic or whatever you know but because i was just quite open and i was just i was just doing me it was like i'm writing a poem if you like it that's wicked if you don't like it that's cool like we can still be friends do you know what I mean? we, we, we can still be mates so um so yeah to try and inspire other young people to just whether it's boxing or not but just to to work hard um i'm not the the best naturally talented boxer or anything like that i've just had to graft and and be persistent and resilient and not give up do you know how many people would be sitting on the settee saturday that have got more talent in their little finger than than what i could even dream of having but they didn't have that resilience and that work ethic so now they're sat on the settee watching me drinking a beer probably um whilst I'm fighting for, for the British title so you know um it, it's that cliche but hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard so um if that's something that any person never mind young person that anybody can take from from listening to me then yeah I'm, I'm all about that because I, I love trying to empower people I, I never want to belittle somebody to make myself look look better um if I rise that you know I want to I want to encourage people like me to to rise with me, you know, and, and bring people with me. There's there's enough room for all of us to do while I'm not competing with with anybody of other than myself. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I take that. I'm I'm the same. I'm exactly 100 the same as well. So I love what you're doing. I love your mindset. It's just, that's amazing. It really, it truly is. Uh, Matt, I want to talk a bit about. Obviously, you mentioned the flyweight division. Uh, mm -hmm. At the moment, it's booming, and especially in, in Britain. Obviously, now you have a, a IBF flyweight world champion in Sonny Edwards. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're fighting for the British uh, British uh, title in a couple of days. You've got lots of Tommy Frank as well. A couple of weeks ago, you had uh, the super flyweights, uh, Casey, Casey Kadimi and Ijaz mm -hmm. Ahmed fighting for mm -hmm. a British and Commonwealth title as well. How exciting is it to be part of that generation of flyweights? It's amazing, of course. You got the likes as well as Jay Harris, who I've been sparring recently, and and my my old uh, opponent, my last opponent, Neil McCobbin. Um, and then you've you've got the Yafis, and you, you know, and and, and Ed, Charlie Edwards, Sonny brother as well. When you're looking at Superfly and stuff at world level, um, it's amazing. It's fantastic, and and I'm 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 truly honoured to be be a part of it, and and. Whilst there are lots of people, you know, you've just mentioned Sonny and, and uh, Edwards and, and uh, the Yafis and all the rest of it that are doing amazing work. Jay Harris, like I've just mentioned, that are doing far better things than, than what I've achieved thus far. But um, I, I do also feel that, that I'm part of that that wave and, and that generation, especially after my last fight with, with Neil McCubbin down at, at Light Flyweight. People are toting it for you know domestic fight of the year. So we showed that uh, there was cuts, there was knockdowns, there was there was all action punches. There's twelve rounds. We we showed that we can be just as entertaining as as any other weight division. And we were you know we weren't even flyweight. We were light flyweight, you know. And so we showed that we can be just as entertaining. And then off the back of us doing light flyweight, Jay Harris, who's a, a world title contender has now moved down to like flyweight as well um so i think there is a bit more of a spotlight moving on to the the flyweight and the you know the bracketed sides of of those divisions and it's fantastic because we've with all the the talk now that that we are getting which obviously is, is 100 percent important with, with female boxing and and trying to to bring that up to par and and people are trying to campaign to get the ladies to fight for three minutes and, and 12 rounds and, and all the rest of it um the way that we don't want to just automatically overlook uh, female boxers for being female i think it's equally important now that we don't overlook smaller boxers just for being smaller you know i think it's, it's so a lot of people are like are oh, you a professional boxer and then you say oh but you're only a flyweight like yeah. what's only a flyweight <laughs> what does it what does that even even mean you know i mean for like for for myself i'm i'm 30 years of age for my last fight doing light flyweight that's the lightest i've 
ever been in 16 years of boxing ever. I stepped onto the scales for my first ever gym session, 2005. I was 54.5 kilograms as a 15 year old. I got into the scales for my last fight as a 30 year old man at 48 kilograms. You know, so obviously height wise, that just means I haven't grown. But physicality, it means that I'm I'm dieting and I'm eating well and I'm training hard and I'm I'm sacrificing a whole lot and I'm I'm working as hard as possible to make those kind of weight divisions. And then we get in the ring and because most times we don't have the luxury of a first, second, third round knockout, we are going to be going the, the 10, 11, 12 round distances. Um so and then we we're notoriously known for throwing mammoth amounts of punches as well so um it, it, yeah we in, instead of getting hit with just one hard solid heavyweight shot we're getting pinged with a thousand little you know and, and they rattle your head trust me <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, I come out i come out of my last fight and i know it's the adrenaline and everything as well but i got out of the ring and, and sort of everything was moving like twice as quick but like in slow motion as well and and that's why people get addicted to, to boxing and the buzz and the adrenaline because it, it, it is so much well i say this I, i've never taken drugs so i don't know but i imagine it's it's so much like what people feel when when they take a, a form of drug because like i say everything was happening like it was heightened it was everything was really quick but everything was sort of slow motion as well it was strange so um so yeah it, it's amazing to be a part of it and I, I hope one day that you know we may get a a light flyweight even world champion and they can maybe look back and go you know what it was it was thanks to the likes of Matty Windle and Neil McCobbin putting on that great show that put a spotlight on the light flyweight division again and, and opened it up and and now there they are with a with a world title over their shoulder, you know. So again, we, we kind of <laughs> looping back around to what we was just talking about of, of inspiring people and, and other generations. Hopefully, we we're managing to to open doors for people to make sure as well that they get they get paid fair as well. So again, we're talking about equal pay with, with females, and but of course there there isn't such a thing as equal pay throughout boxing. It's not just a, a gender thing, you know. So some people earn more for a for a British title fight than what other people earn for a world title fight. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, there is there is no sort of pay grade or whatever within boxing. It's, it just kind of comes down to what you negotiate, who, who what promoter are you with, you know, what opportunity you take. And, and so, but hopefully, um, yeah, there, there will be a bit because the, the pay down at these lighter weight divisions isn't, isn't very good. I, I could be world champion and, and have multiple defences and someone fighting for a, a British heavyweight title will probably earn more for one heavyweight British title than what I would get for a year's worth of world titles, you know. So, um, yeah, hopefully the, the pay will start to come because we, we've proven that, that we're in fights are just as exciting. Like I say, me and McCobbin was, was exciting as, as any fight. Um, Sonny could be just as, as technical and, and brilliant as, as any fight. Jay Harris has proved in his recent attempts he's, he's just as tough, especially against Martinez, he's just as tough as, yeah. as any other fighter in any weight division. So we, we tick all the boxes for a, a various range of opponents. So hopefully, yeah, we can start getting them. Um, because what it annoyed me the other week when um, you, you mentioned Ahmed and, and Kademi and they wasn't even... It wasn't even a shot. Yeah, I was. I was at that fight. I was at that fight. Uh, I was in Birmingham for that fight, and uh, I was messaging my. I was messaging my colleague Nando, uh, who, who was away at the time, and I messaged him, and he was like, "I, I can't believe this fight is not on TV. Yeah. This fight is. It's, this fight is a. It's a. It's a. It's a rematch. It's for the yeah. British Commonwealth title." And, and their first fight was good. It wasn't like their first fight was bad. I mean, it was better than their first fight, but their first fight was good. Yeah. You know, for me, so, it, for me, it was fight of the night. For me, it was fight of the night. That was the best fight of the night, but it wasn't yeah. on BT Sports, and that was no, very, very disappointing. Was super flyweight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I think I think that's something that that definitely needs to to be looked at and addressed because, as I say, we, how it is now, if they were just left off telly there because they were female, 
there'd be a lot of, of talk around and surrounding that and saying that it's not on. So I think the fact that they were left off bridge, like I say, I grew up watching Friday Fight Night where every week a British title fight would be the main event. And it would be British title fights of, of lighter fighters as well, the likes of Michael Hunter, Jason Booth, Ian Napper, Paul Edwards, Chris Edwards, Shinny Bayar. These were all flies, super flies, bantams, um, and, you know, every single week. And now we're talking in, in 2021, and they can't even make the television because they're, they're smaller guys, you know. So hopefully we're all putting a putting a, a spotlight on these these divisions and and um yeah I think we I think we're getting quite a good um you know sort of fan base as well people know now people that that know their boxing know what what us little guys can can bring to the table do you know what I mean so um yeah I'm, I'm sure it will change in years to come but I'd, I'd like to think that I'm I'm a, a very small part of that that wave and that change yeah no, I mean, I, I echo that. Uh, I'm a big advocate for not uh, women's boxing, but for the flyweights and super flyweights mm -hmm. and, and the light flyweights. And uh, my colleague was at one of the fights recently. It was a Joe Joyce feet Tackham fight. And he saw and he bumped into Sonny Edwards. And Sonny Edwards came up to him and said to him, keep doing what you guys are doing. You're giving, you're giving, you're putting spotlight on the flat, on the super flyweights, mm -hmm. the light flyweights and the, and the flyweights. And they're giving us uh, the attention that other channels probably wouldn't. Yeah. So when I heard that, my friend told me that, that, that made me feel good about myself that we're giving the smaller fighters that platform and I, like I said I spoke to Tommy Frank and he mentioned the same thing about regarding money the the, the money side mm -hmm. of things where you could easily be in a fantastic 12 rounder and uh you get paid probably peanuts for it where peanuts. when you factor in everything that that a camp costs you or all the appropriate food that you have to get all the the supplements and, and protein products and stuff that, that you have to buy you things like you know and i know these aren't essential but you know things like your sports massages and, and so you've got to get your medical every year your boxer's license you know you want to get some i've just had to buy like some new new sparring gear and boots and you know there are always things e each fight that you have to get um and it, and, it, and it adds up so what you then get paid for of course, a, a percentage of that goes to your, your trainer and manager, which obviously, you, you know, you hold no animosity towards, but I'd, I'd rather it be a percentage of, of a bigger part. Do you know what I mean? But you, you lose a percentage of that to, to your trainer and manager. You lose a percentage of it, obviously, for, to the tax man as well. Um, and and then you start counting it up and you, you're you not really left with a, with a great deal considering you've just been, well, like, you know, the last, only known about this fight kind of four or five weeks we've not had massive amounts of time but but for the past i don't know six weeks or so um i've been doing like 15 hour days because of, of work as well so i'm working nine till five so i'm up at five in the morning to train and then i train and then i go to to work nine till five and then you know sometimes i might get out of work a little bit earlier but i'm, I'm at the gym then between kind of five six o'clock I'm home then between seven and half past eight. So you think some mornings I'm up at five o'clock. Yeah. I don't return home until half past eight. Um, and then you set your alarm for five o'clock again the next That's morning to thing. do it all again. And, and you're doing that day after day after day, week after week, month after month. And um, to, to then not really get paid a great, uh, you know, anything substantial, really not getting paid anything substantial at all. Um, and it, it, it's really difficult. But, you know, we, we, we or I, I do it for, someone asked me the other day, actually, a friend of mine, he said, what's, what's your motivation? I said, you know, you, 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 you're approaching 31, you know, it's not really much money to be made. What? You said you're not getting, I might have to fight potentially for the next fight, depending on what, but, you know, we've always got plans for stuff. Potentially, I might not get paid for my, the fight after this, um, but I just want to take a chance on something. Um, they said, what? What, what do you do it for? And I said, belts. <laughs> That's what I'm doing it for, you know. Like I, I, whether it, whether we get this British on Saturday or don't forget, I'm also the number one contender for the Commonwealth title after, after the back of my last fight as well. So I'm certainly going to be chasing the Commonwealth title regardless of what happens this Saturday. Um, belts, you know, that's... The, I, don't, I, I know a, a trophy cabinet doesn't 
doesn't pay your mortgage at the end of the day. But when I am sat back in my house and I, I've got my mortgage and everything, I can just look in the corner of the room and I've got a little trophy stand that are full of it. I've got a few bouts from my amateur days as Birmingham champion, Midland champion, all the rest of it. So on. But I, 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 I should have won a Midland title. I've, I've been kind of uh, judged out of, out of those on a couple of occasions. And then, I, you know, I, I felt like I should have got the Commonwealth title on, on the last one and the goalpost kind of changed last minute. So um, I'm due a belt. <laughs> I mean, so whether it's, whether it's that day or, or soon to come, but I, I, I can't stop until I, until I get a belt. So that's what I'm doing it for. Yeah, brilliant legacy, and that's what that's what that's what we like to hear as, as uh, boxing fans. I want to ask you. Obviously, you mentioned you came out short for the Midlands title. Uh, one of them was against uh, Ijaz Ahmed, uh, who's, who's British and Commonwealth Commonwealth champion. Would you ever f uh, maybe have if the possibility came up for a rematch with Ijaz Ahmed? Would you ever take that uh, that fight? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I saw Ijaz the other day at a show, and uh, it was nice because we. I don't like not getting on with people it irritates me i don't, I don't it's, you know there's enough drama in the world as it is without me bickering with somebody else over a boxing match do you know what i mean so um we said the law we give each other a, you know a bit of a hug and stuff and he wished me all the best he said he, you know he hopes that i'll win on saturday and all the rest of it um so so that was nice uh, and i've known each other a long time from the amateurs you know been to Ireland together and shared rooms and stuff together, which is why I was quite disappointed with the way he spoke about me to the to the media in the build up to our fights. He almost just like read a script of platitudes that that boxers are supposed to say, you know, and he, he kind of didn't really show me a great deal of respect in the build up to to the fight. Um, didn't really acknowledge the fact that we've known one another previously, trained together and all the rest of it. So um but yes, yeah, so it was nice to see him, nice to, to get his, his well wishes and, and it was rooting for me. But yeah, if that opportunity comes up, I, I know he's got to do the rematch with Kademi. But uh, following on from that, if we ever had the opportunity to, to even, like I say, I'm not a big flyweight, you know, I'm, I'm, I am made I made the light flyweight limit saying, you know what, I, I think if I had like notice and, and a fight that was worth it, I could do straw weight the lightest weight minimum weight like do you know what I mean that's that's what I took from my last fight so I wasn't even looking at, at flyweight for the foreseeable future but this opportunity presented itself and you don't turn pro with the British Boxing Board of Control to turn down British title fights so that's why we've we've taken it not because I, I think I'm uh, the favourite or I'm, I'm definitely going to win or anything like that it's just you know I'd, I'd regret it more if I didn't take it, yeah. then if I took it and got knocked out in the first round, you know, if that happens, at least I know I took it, yeah. took the chance, um, I was brave enough to get in there, and you know, what, whatever happens, happens. But um, but yeah, then if if the Ahmed fight came up at, at eight three for a British or Commonwealth title or something, um, yeah, I'd, I'd snap the hand off, I'd I'd be writing, and <laughs> I'd be straight in there, hundred percent. Brilliant, brilliant. Obviously, you're, you're fighting on on Fight Zone, which is a, a quite a, it's a new app and it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. growing, is it? And it gives you a big opportunity to showcase your skills to a, to an audience. How big an opportunity is for you to maybe put on a show and then go on to fight for bigger fights, uh, like you mentioned the Commonwealth, and then maybe who knows a European European title on the line, mm -hmm. on the line. How big an opportunity is it for you? Yeah, massive. Uh, it, it was it was bizarre actually after my last fight, kind of. You know, my social media following increased and, and I started to get a, a lot of of nice messages from people just kind of saying that they're sort of fans of mine or whatever now and, and a couple of people asking to like buy buy t-shirts and, and hoodies and people asking if they can send me photographs of me for me to sign and send back to them and stuff so um it, you know that that was really kind of humbling and and Crazy that that these people that are, have got collections of I don't know Ricky Hatton and Joe Calzaghe and David Hay and Edwards probably and you know all the rest of it and are now asking if if they could have me sign a photograph for them and stuff as well so that that was that was really kind of pinch yourself stuff yeah. for me. Um, I also received a, a message from a, a stranger did did not know them at all and um, in New Zealand. 
that that watched the the Macabre fight and was was talking about how much they enjoyed it and how good they thought it was and they they're going to keep their eye out for when I'm fighting again because I didn't know then that I'd be fighting Tommy they they're going to keep their eye out for when I'm fighting next so it it shows you just how wide fight zone yeah. does reach and then I ha I've got a friend out in Australia and, and so she she's been watching it from from Australia um so it's, it's you know and then of course she kind of passes it on and tells her friends but oh look this is one of my friends from England so then Aussies start watching it then do you know what I mean so uh the, the fact that it that it is this this kind of tv app makes it more accessible for for people because whether you've got a a fire stick, your television, your computer, you know, tablet, mobile phone, whatever it is, you can you can watch it on on any device from anywhere in the world. So it really does open it up. Um, it's also provided me a good chance to to get a few sponsors on board for fights and stuff as well. So um, sponsorship is never something that I've really actively pursued, just just because it 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 makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> you feel like I, I've always I've, I've been grown up I've grown up with my parents and, and the whole mentality of if we can't afford it we can't have it you know we we don't borrow we don't you know like from borrow up money we can't afford and, and scrape money off people scrounge money off people just to you know if we've never been able to afford to go on holiday we've had to miss out on holidays you know if if we couldn't afford for the heating to be on after nine o'clock we've had to turn the heating off at nine o'clock and put our coats on do you know what i mean like that's just the the way we've grown up i've I've never been without my, my parents are amazing i've never ever gone without anything but it, you know equally there's it, there's been limits and, and ceilings to what what we were able to have so when you when i I, I'm, this isn't an attack on anyone but when I see people getting ready for like four round or six round fights and they all just do the same old Facebook oh if anyone wants to sponsor me and uh, and it, it's fine I get it I understand 100% why people do it but it's always just made me feel really uncomfortable um, and now that I have been asking for sponsorship for my last couple of fights um, it still makes me feel uncomfortable but at least I've been able to say to them, you know, your brand will be shown on Fight Zone, on worldwide television, um, of course, and even things like this now as well, because of course we don't get interviews like this left, right, and centre when you're just doing four round fights. But now we we are doing interviews, you know, so um, you can start talking about like today. I've I've met with one of my sponsors, a total football coaching, um, and I've got a, a physio that that sorts me out and keeps me in, in good shape. Um, bakery records, the hat that I'm wearing, they um, mixed the the intro for my last fight, which I know everybody quite quite enjoyed with the, the whole purge theme that I went for. So bakery records is my, my nephew, my sister's lad, but um, he's, he's a, a music producer and he's, he's very talented at, at what he does. Um, Baxter Williams, a recruitment company there, there i've known nick they're one of the, the owners for for a long time he's an ex-professional rugby player so we've got that that professional sports thing together um house of cavani as well in, in Birmingham. they're gonna fit me up with a nice tailored suit but uh, i went in to see them uh yesterday and i said to them bro there's no point in measuring me now because if you measure me for a suit now it'll never fit me or it'll fit me for like two days a year <laughs> and then I'll never be able to wear it. So I'm gonna go back when I've put on a half a stone or so after the fight and uh, get measured up properly and get a, a tailored suit from from House of Cavani. But um, but yeah. So it's not just the exposure that we're getting there. Of course, Skinny Food. Everyone knows what I'm associated with as well, and uh, they're doing uh, amazing work. The the owner there is one of my my best pals, and and they're just just absolutely just smashing it so um so yeah it, it's not only the fact then that their brand will be will be shown and promoted on on fight zone and worldwide television it's when you're doing interviews such as this that you can you can big people up and and then of course as i've said people then start to take a greater interest in your social media so then every time you post about one of your sponsors more people then go and follow your sponsors and um, the guy uh, fuzzy concepts that that designed this whole thing and, and he painted my mask and everything that i wear to the ring he's a again he's a good friend of mine he's a graffiti artist um 
a couple of people have since been in touch with him and booked in to do some graffiti either in their workplace or their kids bedroom or at their school or so it's nice that I can kind of give back a little bit then so you know like I said when I've said all previously if you if you can't afford something you can't have it it's like I am still paying for services now but but in a different way and 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 the opportunity of fight zone and commonwealth and british titles and all the rest of it allows me to to do that when i if i ever have to have like another tick over four six rounder or something i won't be asking for sponsors but whilst i'm i'm training for 12 round fights i didn't even ask for sponsors for my 10 round midland title fights but whilst i'm fighting for the 12 round fights and all the rest of it you know it's given me a little bit of encouragement to to ask for sponsorship and, and thankfully some people have, have been forthcoming so um yeah ho- hopefully i've, I've been a- I, I just don't like the idea of of me taking and not being to, able to to help the, the the business back you know so if i can give a little bit back to the people that have decided to help me the other thing that i hate as well is some people um give me a bit of a bit of sponsorship and they're like oh i'm at I'm sorry it's not a bit more and I'm like mate you've just bought me like a whole load of new sparring gear some bag gloves and a pair of boots or something you know it might have come to 500 quid or something I'm like no need to apologize for what what you've given me I'm, I'm very thankful that that you even want to give me anything do you know what I mean so uh that's another sort of mentality that I want people to get out of and um, yeah just trying to to have a bit of sort of a, a family feel I guess you know and a lot of people that sponsor me people that I've known for a long time or old school friends whatever it may be so um, it, it's nice to kind of keep it in house and and like again full circling back to what we've talked about trying to to promote people as as I'm doing better people that I know and, and local businesses and amazingly talented people I can try and um put them on a on a bit of a platform and, and showcase their brilliant skill sets as well brilliant brilliant Matt before I let you go uh have you got a quick message for your fans who are going to be tuning on on fight zone Saturday night and for, and fans who are going to be coming to watch you in Sheffield come Saturday night yeah, obviously just a, a massive thank you, especially to those that have, have put their hand in their wages to, to make the effort to come to Sheffield. I know people that are coming from, from sort of all corners of the country. We've got a couple of uh, teachers coming from, from Tenbury Wells, like near Hereford Way, and, and they're coming up because um, I worked at their school and they, they saw that I did some good work with, with their young people and, and their boxing fans. So now they've got like a, a boxer that they know to, to get behind, you know, they're they're pushing forward and so a, a massive thank you to everybody that's that's helping to support me um same with the people that are, that are paying their subscriptions to fight zone to to tune in um and just keep them cross for me man whichever god you pray to pray to them <laughs> extra hard for me keep me in your thoughts and um yeah uh, ultimately I, I just want a good performance you know i mean obviously you want to win every fight once to win every fight but that that goes without saying uh, i just don't want to um, do myself an injustice you know i think after after my last fight people saw what i'm about they saw that i bring excitement and i'm tough and you know i'm a good boxer and, and all the rest of it so um, i i just want to i just want to do myself justice and um i'm sure me and tommy will yeah, we'll put on a, a cracking fight. I'm sure. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm dubious because I don't want to tempt fate, you know, what I mean? and, uh, and make it a stinker. But I'm, I'm sure with the way that I naturally fight and the point that I think Tommy will feel he has to prove, um, I think at some point it will be, it will be fireworks. So yeah, thank you to everybody that, and the same to Tommy's fans as well, people that are, that are buying tickets for Tommy and it doesn't, it doesn't bother me in the slight. In fact, I, I, I'm, I'm actually hoping for quite a hostile reception. I, I like that hostility, that atmosphere. I'd rather walk in to a, an arena full of boos and jeers than an arena full of silence and sort of ambivalence, you know? So, um, anybody that's supporting either tommy or i that is going to contribute towards the atmosphere of, of saturday night um i'd just like to to thank them ahead of time brilliant brilliant matt i'm gonna wish i wish you and tommy nothing but the best you get home safe to your families and i can't wait for saturday night it's going to be a cracking fight and i wish you both the best so thank you brilliant thank you matt take care now thank you bye bye